Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I wanted to make a video since I hadn't made one in a while, um, mainly to cover a few issues I've seen. I've seen a couple minor issues with the way antennas have been mounted on ground stations and on aircraft lately. Um, I just wanted to touch base on that and just do a little quick tutorial on some of the more common antennas that are out there right now um, and proper way to mount them. Um, just quick and painless. Uh, from left to right, what we've got Ivy Crazy Crosshair, uh, designed by Ivy Crazy. Alex Greed um, and Hugo at True RC up in Canada. Um, then you got a helical antenna. Um, this is a very common uh, antenna in the FPV world right now um, for circular polarization. Um, we got a stock linear whip that comes with every single FPV system out there. Um, you've got uh, my design. Um, I designed this with a little help from uh, Ivy Crazy and uh, Hugo, who ran, who ran some simulations for me. Uh, this is a set of stacked skew planar wheel antennas, um, circular polarized. It's a virtually identical radiation pattern to the uh, uh, the True RC Horizon, which is uh, I believe stacked fans is what he uses in that antenna. That antenna has a little uh, higher axial ratio than the SPWs, but it's a little more difficult to build. Um, then you got a LRS system dipole. Um, this is standard. It comes with the range link, dragon link, uh, the time of share, uh, and the chain, uh, the chain link uh, LRSs. Um, this is what the most common LRS antenna is right now. I'm not sure if Easy UHF comes with these or not. I think they come with the Sander style monopole. Um, which is also a linear polarized antenna, just like the, uh, like it's the big brother, the dipole. Um, and you've got a Ivy Crazy designed uh, pepper box, which is a set of stacked uh, and phased uh, crosshairs, uh, circular polarization, 13 dB. Then you got uh, an I. This is an Ivy Crazy uh, air screw, um, circular polarized antenna. Uh, that's from his latest line, the uh, Bluebeam Ultras. And then uh, this is an Ivy Crazy designed Moxon rectangle uh, designed for our LRS systems. Um, this is a uh, linear polarized antenna, uh, horizontal polarization. So we'll get into it real quick. Um, I don't want to keep you guys too long. So what we have here, um, we'll start with the crosshair and the helical. Mounting them, you can mount them any way you want, okay? Mm -hmm. There is no top and bottom to either one of them. You can mount them any way, shape, or form that you want. Just bear in mind that they're directional antennas, so you're going to want to maintain them pointed and oriented at the aircraft. Um, so again, there is, no, there is no top and bottom on them. You can mount them whatever way works for you and your, your ground station and your, your particular setup. Um, also, um, I've seen the question pop up a lot. Uh, you cannot change the orientation of the uh, polarization by changing the orientation of the antenna. So basically, uh, if the antenna is built right-hand circular polarized, you cannot change it to a left hand just by simply turning the antenna on its side. Uh, it's, think of it as a screw. If it's a right-handed screw, it still goes in turning to the right. So that brings us to the stock linear whips. Uh, these antennas work the best when mounted vertical. Um, if you mount them vertical, that gives you a vertical mount, uh, vertical polarized antenna. If you mount it horizontal, it changes it to a horizontal ante mount, uh, polarized antenna. But remember, it has a null along the axis. So anytime that plane is pointing in, or is flying, flying through that null, you're going to have video drop out, so it's best to mount it vertical. Uh, that brings us to the uh, stack skew planers. Uh, this antenna is circular polarized omni, uh, designed for low altitude, long range. Um, you're going to mount it vertical like this uh, because it has a huge null on the top and the bottom running along the axis. So you're going to mount it vertical like this, uh, long long stem or long coax uh, going up. 
you also don't want to mount it directly on top of your uh, your ground station. You want to get it away from the ground station a little bit to get out of the Fresnel zone. Um, one wavelength is usually good enough. Um, I know Hugo's got one that he's got an incredible distance between it and his ground station. Um, <clears throat> all right, so next would be the uh, Sander style monopole. Again, this is a linear polarized antenna. Um, it is most effective when mounted vertical. It can be mounted horizontal, but again, you're changing it to a horizontally polarized antenna. Um, and it has a null along its axis. So vertical is the best option for this antenna. Um, also, this antenna was designed in to be used with his uh, Easy UHF diversity receiver, I believe. So what you would want is if, let's pretend this dipole for one minute is a, uh, another monopole. You would have two monopoles on it, and you would mount them at a 90 degree angle to each other so that any orientation that the plane is in, you got one of these antennas is still going to stay in polarization with your uh, ground station antenna. So that brings us to the uh, dipole for the LRI systems. Um, it is also a linear polarized antenna. Uh, you're going to want to mount this antenna. Uh, it works best when mounted vertical. Um, it has a ground plane, so it has a top and a bottom. Um, this particular antenna is one I built, so I know what's the bottom and what's the top. Um, but typically what will happen uh, if you get these stock from, say, Rangelink, Dragonlink, um, Thomas Schreer, uh, and I'm not sure about the Easy UHF, but they're shipping with them, but, uh, and the Chainlink, um, what you actually get is the coax will run almost parallel to the ground plane for, you know, 10 millimeters, half inch. You know, 10, 12 millimeters or up to a half an inch uh, for you standard SAE guys in the U.S. here. Um, that'll run along the ground plane. So that'll help how you identify the top and the bottom of this particular antenna. Uh, it's not meant to be mounted horizontal. It is meant to be mounted vertical. <clears throat> I've seen that mounted horizontal before. Okay, uh, this air screw, uh, the following... Uh, will basically apply to any circular polarized antenna that is omnidirectional. Uh, the cloverleaf, the skew planer, uh, the verberant, the mad mushroom, the fan, the windmill, they all work the same way. <clears throat> you want to mount this antenna vertical, okay? Um, there's two different options for it when you mount it vertical. Um, you can mount it vertical on top of the aircraft, or you can mount it vertical on the bottom of the aircraft. Um, advantages and dis disadvantages. Okay, advantage one of mounting it below the aircraft. It's clear of all the electronics on the aircraft, so if you want to fly high altitude, long range, this is ideal because, like I said, it's clearing everything. Uh, nothing can get in the way and block the signal. No battery can block it, no camera, no motor, uh, no servos. If you plan on flying low range, though, mounting it on top is ideal, okay? Again, same basic principles. You're clearing most of, the, uh, most of the electronics on the aircraft by doing it this way when you're flying low to the ground. So again, vertical, either on top or bottom of the aircraft. <clears throat> Mox and rectangle is a cool little antenna. Um, is a directional uh, 5 dB antenna. Um, design this particular one is designed to be mounted directly to your uh, transmitter mounted to your uh, your LRS transmitter mounted to your radio um, this antenna can be used in, in two ways um, bearing in mind that it is directional um, the active element is the the fed elements um, it comes off your coax um, keep that direct point at your aircraft at all times well not all times it's got a pretty wide beam but anyway in the direction of your aircraft um, you can mount this antenna was designed for horizontal polarization and to be used in conjunction with the uh, turnstile by Ivy Crazy um, that I'm sure you've seen plenty of uh, you want to make sure the antenna is mounted horizontal to the ground for horizontal polarization you can cheat with this antenna um, if you don't have a turnstile and use it with a dipole turn the antenna vertical and it goes, because it's linear polarized, 
it goes from horizontal to vertical polarization and now you have an antenna that you can point at your plane using a dipole um, or turn it horizontal and use it with your plane that has a mounted uh, turnstile. All right, the biggest offender of orientation issue that I've seen um, is the pepper box. This is a new antenna, fairly new antenna that uh, I'd be crazy designed that a um, few people have gotten and I've seen in their videos or out at fields um, the antenna mounted. I won't say wrong, but not the way that it was intended to be mounted. So what you have here is a circular polarized directional antenna, 13 dB gain. This antenna has 180 degree beam width left to right and between 45 and 58 degree beam width top to bottom. It does have a top and a bottom, um, but the top and the bottom are not specific. It doesn't have to be this is the bottom, this is the top, or this is left and this is the right. Um, but it, it is designed in such a fashion that your long sides have to be vertical. They absolutely have to be vertical when mounting this antenna. Um, short sides are top and bottom. Um, long sides, again, need to be vertical. Um, what this does is gives you 180 degree beam width left to right out this way. Okay, um, so you can fly literally a mile to your right and never turn the antenna. Two miles to your right, 10 miles in some cases, uh, and never have to really turn your antenna. Um, disadvantage of this antenna by doing it, mounting it like this, is the beam width is fairly narrow for top to bottom. So altitude is kind of a, not out of the question, but when mounted this way, altitude is not ideal. It's not the ideal to shoot for with this antenna. Uh, the antenna was actually designed for low range punching through objects because Alex likes to fly through a lot of trees and he needed something that would do it better. Um, I don't know how much better realistically it is than a, uh, a crosshair because that's more ineffective, but that's what it was designed for is punching through a lot of trees um, at low altitude and out, you know, off to the sides. Um, now, you can actually take this antenna if you want to fly altitude with it and mount it sideways. That's why I say it's not necessarily wrong, but it's not following the intent of the design. Uh, if you turn this sideways, you now have a much larger beam top to bottom, but a narrower beam left to right. So what it does is, it now means you have to track the antenna, or track the aircraft with the antenna. So, um, mount the antenna like it's intended, vertical, and your FPV experience with this antenna will greatly improve. Um, that's about it. I, like I said, I just wanted to cover a few antennas and a couple of mistakes I've seen orientation-wise. Uh, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. Uh, I'll get back to anyone that does as quickly as I can. Um, in the meantime, get those planes up, and I'll see you in the sky.